Today is Tuesday. It is the 14th day of the second month of 2017. It is St. Valentine's Day. And even though this is the perfect day to show your appreciation to your significant other, we must not lose sight of that grand conspiracy that the Diamond Cartel and the Dual Citizens want you to believe that you must go out there and borrow, borrow from them $20,000 and buy a diamond ring from them and you're going to spend years paying off this diamond ring and the interest so they can get rich and you can stay a debt slave. I will not spend much time on this. It's obvious you do need a significant other to keep you in line, to keep you down the right path. But you do not need a diamond ring or a piece of paper from the government to make it legitimate in the eyes of God. For you see, God does not ask you for a blood test. He does not ask you for any money for a marriage certificate. He does not ask you to borrow $20,000 for a diamond ring. And God forbid that your loved one turns into a crack drug addict. Unlike the greedy lawyers, God will not ask you for a retainer fee for the divorce hearings, which will leave you broke and in debt for the rest of your life. You see, marriage is a fine institution, but who wants to live in an institution? Like I said, we're not going to spend much time on this, but it is probably the most important decision you'll make in your entire life, who you're going to spend the rest of your days with. And as I said, you do not need a piece of paper from the government to do that. So on to the current events of the day, and there are quite a few. Right out of the gate, this is no surprise to anybody. A dual citizen from Wall Street has been confirmed as Trump's new Treasury Secretary. Now, Mr. Foreclosure King himself, Mr. Munchkin, he will be handling all of Donald Trump's money. So, as you can imagine, Goldman Sachs, Wall Street, dual citizens across the world will be celebrating tonight for they stay in command. They stay in control of America's money. Of course, the next thing they want to stay in control of is your body. That would be microchipping humans. There are even senators out there and congressmen who are worried about it, and they're going to put laws into place that would keep the dual citizens, the corporations, from forcing you to get a microchip before you get a job with the big corporations. It's kind of mind-boggling that we even have to think about this. Controlling your money is just not enough. They want to control the air you breathe. They want to control the water you drink. They want to control your body. Because they're such a small percentage, the dual citizens are such a tiny, tiny, small percentage of the world, they need total control over you if they're going to stay in charge over us. Now, the next story is tapped-out Americans are going to spend less this Valentine's Day. Well, any Gentile out there who has no job, any of us out there who are picking up the breadcrumbs, we already know this. And of course, to make matters worse, if you want to keep people out of jobs, then you're going to go ahead and raise the minimum wage, just raise it up. Why don't we raise the minimum wage to $100 an hour where nobody will have a damn job? And talking about not having a big government job anymore, that would be General Flynn, who just resigned. Let me say this about General Flynn. It's possible that Donald Trump hired Flynn because of his Irish bullshitting background. But we have to be careful. As much as I want to put my Irish brothers and sisters back to work, As much as I want us Gentiles in positions of power, we must be careful. We learned this in Yemen, didn't we? Mr. Flynn was not on the job for not even 30 days. And an American soldier, an American man, lost his life in Yemen on a blotched raid. That's why 
General Flynn lost his job. That's why General Flynn did not even make it 30 days on the job because an American man lost his life in Yemen in a blotched raid. I'm not going to pull any punches here. That's the main reason. But was he set up to take the fall? You see, Donald Trump pits one team against the other team to try to get the best results he can. Was General Flynn set up? Let's go into some of the details here. Now, some people might have saw this coming when they found out that Flynn was a, a Democrat. Flynn likes the women to terminate the miracle of life. So, make no mistake, his personal views worked against him. When it comes to the cutting board, his views on life did not help him. A young American soldier losing his life in Yemen in a blotched raid. Again, that's the main reason. But Donald Trump is pitting team against team. And there may be some underlying factors that we're not aware of. I'd like to dig into them a little deeper. And that road will lead us to the next national security advisor. His name would be Keith Kellogg. Now, he was involved in Oracle Corporation. So this is going to give us some pretty big clues into what's happening behind the scenes. You see, when it comes to Oracle, you need to focus on cloud technology. You need to focus on the Internet, where the government can find out everything about you because you're handing the information over to them. Oh, they say when you put it in the cloud, it'll be safe. It'll be safe as the day is bright. I don't believe it. Don't believe it for one second. The government wants to know everything about you. It's going to make their job easier to find the bad guys. So when you put all your information in the cloud, remember who's involved in storing it on the cloud. People who are involved in national security. If you trust them... Well, I got a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn. And since we're on the subject of Brooklyn, New York, then my next question would be, well, who controls the Oracle Corporation? Who's the man who hired Mr. Kellogg? And then, if you find the man who hired Mr. Kellogg for Oracle, then you will find the man who made a phone call to Donald Trump and say, yes, this will be your next national security advisor because I have 50 billion dollars in the bank and you have no idea how much power I have and funny when we always follow it to the end when we take this road to the very very end or to the very top we always it always leads us to one person a dual citizen is this a coincidence I think not because everybody who knows me knows one thing I don't believe in coincidences. So what does it all mean? I'm going to tell you something that nobody else is going to tell you. Donald Trump is pitting one team against the other. Oh, you've heard that before. But what you haven't heard is the teams, the names of the teams. You see, Donald Trump is going to pit the Gentile team against the Zionist team. That's what's in place right now in the White House. The Gentile team against the Zionist team. Nobody else is going to describe it like that to you because they're scared. Everybody else will have a different name for the team. It'll be the red team against the blue team. It'll be Rents's team against Kelly's team. And they'll make up all kind of different names. But the truth is, it's the Gentiles against the Zionists. Donald Trump knows this. Now, I do respect Donald Trump's SOP, his standard operating procedure, pitting one team against the other to show the best results. I love this strategy, but there's only one problem when you're putting it into this type of arena. You see, in this stadium, the game is rigged. These two teams are not coming into the arena with the same amount of money with the same amount of hardware and software and assets. No, the game is rigged. Our Gentile brothers do not have the assets, the connections, and the money 
to even come close to winning this war. You see, they control the money. They have the central bankers behind them. They have mainstream media behind them. We don't have a prayer in this game. Donald Trump only wants one thing. Donald Trump only wants results. He doesn't care how you get it. Make your phone call. Call your friend. Call your banker. Call your oracle. Call anybody you want. But when you come into the office, I want results. That's what Donald Trump wants. And that's why us Gentiles will lose in this game. Because Donald Trump doesn't care if your mother wasn't married to your father. Donald Trump doesn't care if your mommy didn't have a government piece of paper that said she had a marriage certificate from her husband. No, Donald Trump doesn't care. He just wants results. So when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, our Gentile team will lose, I believe, because the game is rigged, I'm afraid to tell you. And since we're on the subject of currency, the next story is about what they have in store for us. What the central bankers have in store for you and I to keep control over us. Donald Trump is going to give us a hint of that. Here it is. The currency devaluations, I've been complaining about that for a long time. And I believe that we will all eventually and probably very much sooner than a lot of people understand or think we will be all at a level playing field because that's the only way it's fair. That's the only way that you can fairly compete in trade and other things. And we will be on that field and we will all be on a level playing field, according to the government officials. They never learn, do they? The shadow government, the deep, dark state who wants to know all your deepest secrets, who want complete control over you, these bloodsuckers never learn, do they? All they want is control. They don't really truly understand that only the invisible hand of the market can actually have a fair currency. Only the invisible hand of the market creates an even playing field. The government cannot create an even playing field. So in the future, when you hear all these big government officials talking about the digital currency, when you hear Donald Trump and his words start to get stronger about the fair digital currency that's coming down the road, remember it's not about being fair or a leveled playing field. What it has to do with is that the shadow government can track your every move. That you're not going to be able to move a dime without the IRS or a government bureaucrat finding out who you gave that dime to. You call that fair? I don't. Now, here's an interesting bit of news. Apparently, mainstream media is a little touchy. They're a little sensitive on the fact that there's fake news out there. Bernie Sanders, I'm not sure if he was joking or telling the truth, but they don't even want you to joke about CNN being fake news. They'll cut you off so fast and make your head spin. I think that's why the young people like Bernie. He sometimes goes off script and tells the truth. Now the next piece of news, this is kind of old, but it's very, very important. I have to touch base on it. And that would be about those so-called judges who have, you know, they have really tall, high fences around their estates, but they don't want any fence around the country. Yeah, they want all those poor people to come in and get all the welfare they want. But anyhow... This information is very, very important. We're going to jump into it. And that's about the western state of Washington. Now, what's funny about this story is that Washington has never really been considered a corrupt state on the level of, say, a Louisiana. But what they just did in Seattle, in a Seattle federal court, well, corruption on that level would make Carlos Marcello envious. Yeah, even the old godfather from Louisiana, Carlos Marcello, he looks like a mere amateur when it comes to these so-called judges up there in the uh, western state of Washington. 
Now here's what they've done. Well, you already know what they've done. You know, they sued Donald Trump. They, Donald Trump had an executive order banning all the people from these countries that we bombed. In the last 15 years, all these countries that we have bombed, Donald Trump wanted a ban from them coming in, a temporary ban from them coming into the United States of America. You already know that. Now, and you already know that these so-called judges sued Donald Trump in the Seattle Federal Courtroom, and they put a stop to Donald Trump's executive order. Now, what you may not know is why they did it. See, everybody knows that the so-called judges stopped Donald Trump's executive order, but what I'd like to get into a little further is why they did it, because I don't believe everybody understands why they did it, and it's very, very important. You see, the cover story is the, the, the so-called judges want everybody in America to believe that they're suing Donald Trump on behalf of all the poor refugees out there. One that we know that's a bunch of bullshit. The reason why the state of Washington is suing Donald Trump to put a stop on this ban is they're doing it on behalf of the big corporations. Corporations like Microsoft, who don't want people like you and I working for them. The last thing that Microsoft and all those California software people and all those people in Washington Seattle area, all these big corporations, the last thing they want is a real American working for them. No, they want to bring in people from other countries. And they want to bring them in and pay them a real cheap wage. And they want to step on the Gentile of America. So this comes down to nothing but an attack on my people. So that's why I have to bring it up. It's so important. These so-called judges are attacking the Gentiles of America. They're attacking the born and raised people in America on behalf of of Microsoft so Microsoft can continue to import any refugee they want and pay them a low wages. You see, this is just corruption on a corporate fascist level. And they're hiding it. They're hiding the fact. I mean, why is it that the state of Washington is suing the President of the United States on behalf of Microsoft and to make matters worse? There's like 95 million Americans out of the workforce. 95 million of us without a job. And you have lawyers out there who are willing to give their services out for free. Not to Americans, mind you, no. The, the attorney lawyers are not going to give me free law services, no. These free law services are only for foreigners. Because we are living in a corporate fascist world. And I do not blame any of this on the poor immigrant who struggles to get here to find a good job. Or even struggles to get here to find a bad job. No, I don't put any of this on the immigrant. I put it all on the corporation. The fascist Microsoft. The fascist corporations who get the help of the government bureaucrats. And it even gets worse. Not only the government bureaucrats, but the so-called judges are now working for the corporation so they can get cheap, cheap labor while 95 million Americans are out of work. I wish, I wish the playing field was level, but it's not. So when it comes to this subject, I know that the attorneys are not working for the poor immigrant in reality, the attorneys are working for the corporations. I know this for a fact because when the corporations are ripping you off, you will get no free attorney. Like right as we speak right now, we have the large oil gas corporations ripping me off at this moment. They're stealing millions and millions of barrels of gas below my land in Ohio literally stealing the natural gas below my land in Ohio. But do you think there'd be an attorney out there which would give me free services? No, because they would be going up against the corporation. So when you're going up against the corporation, you get no free 
attorneys. You get no free lawyer work if that's going up against the corporation. So yes, make no mistake about it. If Holly Burton is stealing your gas, don't expect any lawyer to help you. But if you're a poor immigrant, and you struggle to get here, and then you're willing to work for Halliburton, or you're willing to work for Microsoft for pennies on the dollar, will then expect a lawyer to help you for free. But no, he's that lawyer's not helping out the refugee or the immigrant. The lawyer is there working for free on behalf of a corporation, a fascist, Microsoft, a fascist Holly Burton, who's just there to rip off people like you and I, born and raised Americans. And you, now you know why we're pissed off. If there's any government bureaucrat out there listening, now you know why we're pissed off. And while we're on the subject of government bureaucrats and government agencies, that leads us to the next pitiful, pathetic story, and that would be YouTube censorship. You may have heard about this already, or maybe you haven't, but this is sort of alarming. It has to do with the comments on YouTube. Now, my channel, I used to have hundreds of comments that went straight to the spam box. Now, whenever I got a chance, I would go to the spam box and I would go through there and I would authorize or okay all those comments. Now, the reason why YouTube sent that particular comment to the spam box is YouTube didn't like the comment. Maybe there's some algorithms out there. Uh, YouTube has some special software. Wherever they catch a certain word, that comment used to go straight to the spam box. And anyhow, I would take... Uh, a special piece of my time out and I would go and I, I wanted to make sure that all the comments were out there for people to see and I would oh, I'd have to go in there and okay all the comments. Here's the breaking news. The breaking news is all those comments that used to go to spam and I would have to okay them, now, now they're no longer going to spam. It looks like YouTube is now just canceling them out on their own. So if you make a comment on the channel, on my channel, or if you make a comment on anybody's channel, make sure you understand that your comment may not show up because YouTube has just gone on to full-blown censorship. They do not even give the channel operator a chance to okay the comment. They just go ahead and delete it, and I don't even have any say in it. This is full-blown censorship on steroids. I think this is important to get out there because you may make a comment on one of my videos and you don't see it and you think that I deleted it. No, I did not delete it. That would be the new policy. YouTube is just deleting these comments on their own. This, like I said, is pure censorship on steroids. It is truly pathetic. And since we're on the subject of things that are pathetic, that would lead us to the next story, and that would be Agenda 21, weather modification. There's nowhere on the planet that has more weather modification experiments going on than California. I truly feel sorry for the residents of California. It's a socialist state. It's a commie state where the government bureaucrats are attacking the residents of California on so many different levels, it is scary. But the most recent story, of course, is the dam at Oroville, California. You've already heard about it. It's getting ready to break. It could break. And government officials, the big government officials, this is like their dream come true, they get to order 100,000 people out of their homes. Yeah, you see, this is what government officials love. They love to give orders out. They love chaos, confusion, disasters, because they get to come to the rescue. 
Remember George Bush on that big day and he came to the rescue of America? Little did we know that he was going to lead us into 15 years of nonstop war. Little did we know that the greatest bureaucrat of them all was going to spend trillions of dollars of our money. I mean, the more I think about it, I wonder, where do we find these morons and these idiots? It's almost like a high school popularity contest. These people are void of any intelligence. They don't know how to store water. They don't know how to save money for a rainy day. Basically, all these bureaucrats know is how to fine you, how to tell you to get a permit, if you water your grass, we're going to give you a $500 fine. If you wash your car, we're going to give you a $500 fine. And do they realize that dams are bad for God's ecosystem? No. Do they ever talk about, oh, we need to shut these dams down in a controlled scenario? No. They wait for the disaster to happen, and then they give the orders. 100,000 humans must get up and evacuate their homes by order of the governor, Jerry Brown. Yes, the same Jerry Brown who would like to give billions and billions of your dollars away to foreigners who sneak into the country Jerry Brown, the same man who wants to give out welfare, food stamps, Section 8, give out free money to everybody who was not born in this country. But when it comes to an emergency or a weather modification experiment, well, then he's broke. Then he's got no money, and then he has to go on his hands and knees begging to the man that he does not recognize as his president. How funny is that? Jerry Brown in the commies, Jerry Brown in the socialist state of California, they don't recognize Donald Trump as their president. But when it comes to a handout, when it comes to getting on their hands and knees and begging for money, well, they have no shame then. No shame at all. They get on the phone and they beg Donald Trump to give them billions and billions of dollars for emergency money because they were too stupid to save for a rainy day. And to make matters even worse, where were they when their illustrious leader, Obama, when their respected leader, George Bush, we're spending trillions and trillions of American taxpayer dollars in a desert 6,000 miles away, which had nothing to do with America, when they were blowing trillions of dollars of our money. Where were they then? Did they think about getting up from the cocktail party and going out and having a press release, a press comment? Oh, we need to stop wasting trillions of dollars on these wars because we might have an emergency. We might have a dam overflow. There might be an emergency in California. We might need the money. But no, no. They were nowhere to be found when their illustrious leaders were spending trillions of dollars in useless wars. Nowhere to be found. But when the emergency happens in California, they go on their hands and knees begging Trump for money. C good grief. We are so lucky that these snowflakes did not win. These Hillary Clinton supporters, these delicate, leftist, liberal, progressive snowflakes who don't have the sense, the common sense to save for a rainy day, Lord help us, we are so lucky that these snowflakes lost because they are idiots and morons on a level that we have never seen in this country. I think that is so important that it bears repeating. I believe that these progressives, what we are watching, their stu stupidity, their ignorance is on a level that we have never seen in this country since probably the Civil War. You have to go back to the Civil War to experience ignorance and stupidity on this level. It is mind-boggling. And this will be my last word on the subject. If Donald Trump gives these commie Californians one dime of Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Tennessee's money, 
If Donald Trump gives California one dime of our money, then he's a bigger idiot than the progressive liberals say he is. And as everybody knows, I like to end my videos on a positive note. I like to end my videos being optimistic. One optimistic sign I see out there is it looks like Le Pen of France. She is looking good in her election chances. As I've said before, the criminals you're looking at right now, these European criminals will soon be gone. Marine Le Pen is ahead and growing in stature because she promises to give France back to its people. Marine Le Pen, to put, put it bluntly, is going to put her finger into the eye of the European Union. And these European Union people, all these big wigs in the European Union, they're no longer giving money to the Hillary Clinton Crime Foundation. So this is another good bit of news. It looks like the Hillary Clinton Crime Foundation is going to have to shut down. It looks like Chelsea Clinton and her husband Mark Menzvinsky, well, they had to shut down their hedge fund also because the criminals around the world are no longer giving the Clintons money for power and influence. Hillary Clinton can no longer sell her power and influence because she's done. Bill, Hillary Clinton, George Soros, they're all done. In my opinion, they should flee the country. But we all know they're not that smart. They're not that clever. They'll hang around and they'll say stupid things behind the scenes as us nationalists will grow. The nationalists are winning and the globalists are losing. That's the good news.